Carnarvon Castle, built in the 11th century, not far from the Roman fortification Saguntium used to be, and later on fortified in the 13th century by King Edward I. Centuries later, after 50 years of making only prime lenses, Samyang has finally surprised us with their first zoom lens, the 24-70 f2.8. Seriously, dude? What the f***? Hey everyone, today we are going to review Samyang's first zoom lens, which is the 24-70 f2.8. It's a standard zoom lens because it covers all the focal range most photographers use. So for example, portraits, weddings, landscapes, cityscapes, and also holiday photos. Yeah, actually we're here now on a holiday in Carnarvon. Uh, we choose the best time when Storm Eunice hits the UK, EA for us. So if our audio is a bit windy, please excuse us. Because 2470 is very popular, usually this is the first pro lens any system has. Sony has a lot of options, it's well saturated. You have two options from Tamron, although they go 28, 75, f2.8. Sigma has two of first. One is the 2470 and one is the 2870 f2.8. Sony actually has three offerings in this range. You have the 2470 G Master f2.8, you have the Zeiss 2470 f4, and you have the famous 24105 f4 as well. So today I'm going to test it out for portraits. We will see the capability of its autofocus performance as well as its bokeh. So right now I'm taking photographs of my son. I'm going to stay in one spot to show you that at 24 mm you can include more of the surrounding if you want. And also at 70 mm it's more like up close and personal. It gives more of the personality of my child. Right now I'm going to test its bokeh with its different focal lengths. So first one would be I'll be staying in one spot and just zoom all the way to 70. And the second one would be I'll be retaining the same composition and as I zoom I'll be going further away. So let's do that. So generally this lens has a good background separation, even if though we are shooting in these buildings, there are no distracting elements in the background. And thanks to its wide aperture f2.8 at 24 millimeter, it already has a beautiful bokeh. And especially if you zoom all the way to 70, it just bokeh blasted, which is amazing. So the next thing I'm gonna do is see this lens performance in autofocus. No! Well, let's go to plan B. Now at 70 millimeter. <laughs> Overall, the autofocus performed very well at 24 millimeter. Even with the constant erotic movements of Alisa, it kept me in focus pretty well. About 90% of the images were focused where we wanted. Trouble started when we zoomed the lens to 70 millimeter for this stress test. Almost none of the images were focused where we wanted. It felt like the lens lagged behind, so depending on which direction Alisa was moving, the images were either back or front focused. We have to admit, we pushed the lens to its limits, or more like over it. We did another test with our son coming towards the camera, and there the lens performed much better, until he got in a close range. Also, in our real world use, we did not experience any issues with focusing, so it seems tracking at 70mm at close range is where the lens fails. But it works pretty well in any other scenario. So that's it for the AF and the bokeh test, because now it's storming, as you can see it's raining right now. 
Yeah, and hopefully tomorrow we will have a better luck with the weather because we are planning to go for a hike as we have snowed on just around the corner so we can show you and landscapes, the image quality, corner to corner sharpness, you know, pixel taping. <laughs> Finally, we're here in the Anglesey Barracks of the Dinawi Quarry. It's been a bit of a hike to get here, but I'll be honest, I was worried about the weight of this lens because it's heavier than the Sony or the Sigma counterparts. But it's not bad, it's only 1,027 grams, so just a bit over one kilo. But when it comes to balancing, it's very well balanced. You don't feel front heavy at all, even if you're holding with one hand, even if you zoom to 70 mil where it extends a bit, you still, can hold it very well with one hand only. But the extra way, it doesn't mean extra features, unfortunately. Even further, it's missing the focus hold button, which Sony and the Sigma has. And the only thing you get is this custom switch to change the focus ring into an aperture ring, or you can just program the switch to act as an autofocus, manual focus switch. But there's one thing that I really love about this lens, is the different texture on the focus ring and the zoom ring. So when you have the camera at eye level, you can just tell which one is which by just touch. That's a really nice touch, isn't it? Size wise, it's quite nice. It's, it's just a perfect size. You can see it fits very well on the Sony A7 line. And the front thread is 82 millimeter, which is a little bit big, but that's a very common size among filters. So you can get probably all the filters you need. So when it comes to chromatic aberration, just like the Sony G Master and Sigma, you can see some in the corners, especially at 24 mm And also on shiny edges like glasses and jewelries, you will see purple fringing. And when it comes to loca, you can see sign tinting in the blur background and orange on the foreground. But that's like in line with Sony G Master and Sigma. So let's talk about one thing that I bet most of you are waiting for, and that's image quality. Before we do that, I have a confession to make. I am a pixel peeper. So the first thing I did when I got this lens is take the board out, do some test shots, and the first impressions weren't so great. But the more I'm using this lens, the more I'm impressed with what images it can deliver. The sharpness is really good, the contrast is really good, even backlit situations are not a problem. So even in landscapes like this, where corner to corner sharpness is important, I'm really impressed and I'm really happy to use this lens for that. Now let's see how this lens performed on our test board. At 24mm wide open at f2.8, the center and the mid frame of the image is quite good, but as we get closer to the extreme corners, the image starts to soften up. Stepping down to f4, the center and the mid frame sharpens up, but the extreme corner is still lagging behind. f5.6 improves a little, and at f8, we have peak performance up to the APS-C corners. The extreme corners are still not sharp. Further stepping down, diffraction starts to kick in, softening up the image and overall, but not in the extreme corners, which becoming sharp at f16. Zooming in to 35mm at f2.8, being good in center and mid frame and the corners again slightly soft, but much better than what we've seen at 24mm. Stepping down to f4 improves the quality in all areas of the image. And again, after a slight improvement at f5.6, we get the best performance at f8. We start to see that diffraction softens up the image from f11, where the extreme corners are the sharpest, and at f16 and f22, the image just gets softer and softer. 50mm at f2.8, we see the same good sharpness in the center and mid frame. But the corners are much better here. From f4, the center and the mid frame are excellent and the corners are looking good too. f5.6 improves a little in all areas and f8 again 
brings the peak performance of the lens with even the corners are being really good. As expected, stepping down further will soften up the image due to diffraction, so unless you want to see sun stars, there's no point going further than f11. 70mm at f2.8, the center and mid frame are already very good and the corners are not much further behind. Slight improvement both at f4 and f5.6 where the already good image quality improves slightly further. Surprisingly at f8, there is a jump in all areas and the lens gets sharp corner to corner. f11 is still pretty good, even with a slight softening by diffraction, which is getting stronger as you further step down to f16 and f22. When it comes to real life samples, the lens performed constantly pretty well. As the sense and even the mid frame is quite good at any focal length, you can ignore the softening at corners, which, according to many tests I've seen, can also be seen on Sony G Master and Sigma 2470 f2.8. Overall, in our real life use, we got very pleasing images, and we were happy to see how flaring and ghosting is controlled very well with this lens, not losing any contrast in backlit situations, and just a small amount of lens flare visible even with the sun being in frame. So let's talk about one thing I'm really excited about and we're shooting now on the Sony a7 II modified for infrared on the Samyang 2470 f2.8 and you can see there are literally no hotspots so it's a very safe lens for that which is a big difference from the zoom lenses I tried. Big thank you for Samyang. When it comes to videography, this lens has a lot to offer. The first thing you will notice is that there's barely any focus breathing. There's a very small amount in 24mm as you can see, but when you zoom in to 70mm, then as you can see, it's literally gone. There's zero focus breathing. It's impressive. And that's not the only part where it's impressing the videographers because this lens is also port focal, although it's just software, so the lens compensates when you zoom in and zoom out. But it does a really good job and this can be improved even further by firmware. So just have a look. I focused this on Alisa and now I zoom out. And there you go. The focus just stays where it should. Really good. So overall, Samyang 2470 f2.8 performed really well in any situation. It's very versatile. I've used it on portraits and event photography like weddings, definitely on par with Sony G Master and Sigma. But if you want your lens to be on the lighter side and you want the focus hold button, then your option would be Sigma. But apart from that, Samyang is the best choice for you. Yeah, there is absolutely no reason to get the G Master, which doubles the price. But there is one lens from Sony, the 24-105 f4, which might be the competitor for this lens if you're shooting landscapes because you will stop down anyway, so the f2.8 is not an advantage. But apart from that, this lens again wins. So if I would have to choose between the Sigma, the Sony 24-105 f4 and this lens, I would choose this one definitely so that's it for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed this one please don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you guys on our next video bye that's it <laughs> did you do that don't do that face